Hi everyone, it's Raina. So I've been doing a series of videos on Venus and the various signs, and now I am doing Libra. If you've just clicked on this and you're not sure where your Venus is located, go down below this video. There will be a link to a, a list of all the different years and you know the months and years and you'll be able to find yours. Sometimes you have to know your time of birth so I just want to let you know that ahead of time. But um, Venus is the way that you love and it's the way that you you feel about love and we're speaking uh, usually about romantic love but it can also be in your friendships as well. And Venus is also about art. So the kind of art that you like. Do you like modern art? Do you like, um, you know, impressionist paintings, electronic mu music versus um, Baroque, that kind of thing. And if you are artistic, sometimes there are certain Venus placements that are just uh, lend themselves to being artistic and actually Venus and Libra is one of them because Venus rules Libra just like it does Taurus. This can manifest in somebody who really loves music, who really loves painting, whether they can do it or not. It may not be that you have a talent for it yourself, although you would at least have a sense of harmony with color and things like that, but you have a deep appreciation for it. You may like to go to art galleries as something fun to do where other people go to Packer games, bear games. I'm just thinking about a game that occurred last night. Uh, <laughs> that's why I use those two teams. I didn't watch it, but I just know of it because I'm from the Midwest. But um, some people like sports. You probably do not like sports. That's what I, I'm going to guess, a lot of you. Although I can't say that 100% of the time because uh, I do know at least one person who does like sports who happens to have Venus and Libra. Okay, let me talk about what is actually going on here with Venus and Libra. As I said... Venus rules Libra, so it's automatically going to be romantic. It's automatically going to be interested in whatever Venus is about. Relationships, harmony, aesthetics, so the, the way things look. Being, um, <laughs> for lack of a better word, non-ratchet. People who are Venus and Libra do not like uncouth behavior. That is like, that makes their skin crawl crawl, people who are unrefined, because Venus in Libra is refined, and they want a partner who is well-groomed, who is well-spoken, who does not use a lot of profanity, who does not speak in a very ignorant manner. Venus is an air sign, so it is all about the intellect. Any sign that is air Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, they are uh, signs that are associated with abstract thought. So they tend to not be in touch sometimes with the physical dimension in the way, for instance, a Taurus person or even a Virgo person, which is a sign right next to Libra, would be, where it's more grounded. They tend to be very refined because of that, just by the nature of not being earthy. And that can be good sometimes, but it can lead with um, Libra to be a bit um, squeamish about anybody who has that earthy quality about them. They may feel like the person is very... Um, uncouth, coarse, rough around the edges. And it's interesting because the opposite sign of Libra is Aries. And Aries is a fire sign. And because Aries is the first sign, it tends to be very direct in its behavior. It's very um, simple. It's not um, complicated. And 
it's funny because Aries does not like uncouth behavior as well. I'm talking about specifically Venus and Aries, but even the sun sign, you can say these things are true about the sign itself, but it may give off kind of that vibe. I think about somebody like Marlon Brando, these people that are very, yeah, I was going to say animal, animalistic because there's an animal raw magnetism that comes off of them. Well, Libra is the opposite sign of that. So if, if a Libra person attracts an Aries person into their life, they may feel that this person is rough around the edges and they may be, but, um, so that's one thing that is very commonplace that the peop the person with Venus and Libra really cares about appearances. They want the person to make a good impression on the public and when they go out on in social settings, Venus and Libra can be very social and um, they also, these people can be very extravagant materially because they enjoy the good things in life, the finer things, the beautiful things. Now, uh, Taurus is also ruled by Venus, and Taurus is more connected with money because of that earth element. You know, in the, the tarot, the pentacles are the earth element, okay? So it's tangible goods things that we can hold in our hand. Because Libra is an air sign, it's all about the ideals of what that stands for. The beauty in life, but not necessarily a physical aspect of it. Maybe it's um, just something like a beautiful symphony and the idea, the idea behind it that it's creating harmony in life. And so people with Venus and Libra may not be so direct about, I want cold, hard cash, but they need it in order to fund this um, eerie fairy lifestyle. So they tend to run in those circles. If a person that they're with doesn't have the goods, they may not decide to go with that person because they don't want to live a life that is... Um, ugly or subpar in terms of their surroundings. So they may be the kind of person that they really need colors to match. They really need things to look good. Even if they don't have much money, they may feel like they have to spend money on fresh flowers or something to make their, their lives seem harmonious. And speaking of harmony, people with this position tend to fear, definitely dislike situations where there is conflict. And, and yet I've noticed, I've noted in other videos about Libra, that they tend to attract it. And maybe I'm wrong about this. But in my personal life, dealing with these types of people, and it sometimes it can be the sun in Libra, um, other times Venus and Libra or both, where the person tends to attract conflict because of the need for harmony. That's one of those little paradoxes in life or ironies in life where when you are too resistant to something, it tends to show up in your reality. So there has to be a way of not recoiling at in harmonious situations, as long as it's not a chronic situation. But these people are natural peacemakers and um, mediators. So there may be this maddening tendency to always try to see the all sides of an issue. And this can lead to indecisiveness. But in the case of social interactions, you you may be talking about politics and the Venus and Libra person will bring, will defend somebody who has an opposing view, but then on the other hand, defend a third person who has a third point of view and not want there to be any kind of heated debate. And the other people may be perfectly fine. They're not really taking it seriously and they're not getting upset, but the Venus and Libra person may get upset because they may feel like, it's not nice and it's 
too um, intense or something like that. And they may try to either change the subject or just take everybody's side because they really believe in fairness. And this can show up in relationships too. A Venus and Libra person may be very concerned if they feel like their partner is not is is getting the um the longer end of the stick than they are and they they feel like they're getting cheated out of something they want to be treated in an equi equitable way and yet there may be times when in life where it isn't fair in the sense that we normally think of it, but it doesn't mean that anything is wrong. So there can be an oversensitivity to that concept of what is fair and what isn't fair. And that can cause problems in relationships. The other thing too, is that this is a sign that is associated with intelligence. So Venus and Libra people, I think they have to watch out for the trap of looking at the appearance and not considering how much uh, intelligence means to them. And ultimately, maybe not in the first, if at first sight, but eventually they will get bored with somebody who doesn't measure up intellectually. And so this is going to be particularly true if the sun is in Sagittarius, Virgo, and Li Libra. Okay. So let's um, talk about some of these sun signs and how they... Oh, one other thing that I think is very important, and this may be the most important thing. Venus in Libra is because um, Venus rules the seventh, seventh house in Libra of committed partnership. People who have Venus in Libra, they tend to want a committed relationship. Not that they can't play the field if they have to, but I feel it's fair to say that if they had their druthers, they would have a committed partnership. And because of this, they may be like overly concerned with that. So they can be the kind of people that when they're like 15 years old, they're already like looking for that permanent relationship and they may date the same person all through high school or all through college, uh, find their partner when they're young, but also be very concerned about keeping a partner. So if they ever get divorced or just break up with somebody, they may go right into the next relationship. Obviously, this can be problematic when somebody is too commit too committed to that and is and thinks that they can't function properly without a romantic relationship. This can lead to a shallow form of um, conformity of wanting to appease another person, even when they don't go along with something that the person wants. And I think this is a problematic thing in many cases, because um, the Venus and Libra person, especially if their son is in, in uh, Libra, they can have a tendency to not have a core self where they're just like a reflection of other people. And believe me, they have their own opinions. Everyone does. It's just like they may be too afraid of losing a particular partner, even if that partner isn't really compatible with them, ultimately. So let me let me start with the Sun in Libra. If you have the Sun in Libra and Venus in Libra, watch out for that um, willingness to compromise, to keep the peace too often. It's okay to compromise, but don't do it at the expense of some of your beliefs, your belief system. If it's very important to you, a certain thing, and you're compromising, that's not good. And also... Um, learn how to be alone. You may be a little bit too social and that can create a sense of shallowness in your life where you're always outside of yourself, where you're never like tapping into your core being, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. 
the universe and you're just like concerned, too concerned with the opinions of other people. The other thing too, and this is important for everyone who has Venus in Libra, don't be too concerned about your appearance. And I'll say, especially for women as they get older, be careful that you are not just panicking and running and getting plastic surgery or Botox or something like that to make yourself look what you consider good because it can take over your life and become too much a part of it. I'm, you know, I know that's going to come across as offensive to some people because you're going to think that I'm judging that. And you know what? Hey, I'm, I'm kind of blunt sometimes in the way I talk, but I really feel that this could be a problem for some people with Venus in Libra is with themselves, a tendency to, in some cases you can ruin your appearance by this quest for maintaining a youthful appearance thinking that you're not attractive enough, whatever you want to call it. And being able to be, you know, to value beauty for what it provides without worshiping it, I think is that fine line that you have to kind of walk. You have to walk that fine line. Um, the A person with the sun and Venus in Libra, you may be physically beautiful. And as I said, you may, when you're younger, have relied too much on your looks to get your way because um, Libra is all about charm. But sometimes people rely too much on their charm and people with Venus and Libra can be very charming. But sometimes um, I think that Venus ruled people can be lazy. <laughs> and I had to kind of pause. I don't know if you noticed I paused. I have, I'm ruled by Venus because my rising sign is Taurus. So don't get it twisted. I'm talking about myself just as much as I'm talking about you. Um, but for sure, I mean, I kind of laugh when I think about people with the sun in Libra, um, that they really like they don't like to get their hands dirty usually. So you're looking at that on steroids with this. So there can be a certain, um, I don't know, tendency to get by on your charm, maybe even, you know, manipulate people to give you what you want instead of really, um, using your intellect, which is very high. You know, there's, there's something very refined, with a Libra person, but it's also a very fine mind. And, you know, tends, you tend to be very good in expressing yourself and so very articulate and a keen mind. And don't ever like hide that, especially if you're a woman by being, by acting like a, an airhead it's funny because you're an air sign and air signs can be airheads in the sense that they can be very spacey, but also very brilliant at the same time. And people may not understand how intelligent you are because you are so beautiful. And that can be frustrating, especially for women who are Librans and they want to be known for their mind as well and not just for their beauty. But definitely, I think of all these things, I would say, don't be too much of a relationship addict. Don't compromise your core self for that of another person. Be yourself. Be, be an authentic person. Um, have integrity and authenticity. Don't be fake to get somebody else to like you. And also... Don't be too, you know, it's it's kind of a weird thing with Librans, especially if your son is also in Libra, where you're almost obsessed with, you know, your your romantic relationship, but yet there's a detachment there because it's a double air sign, okay? So there's always a detachment with Libra. As much as they claim that they love someone, they, they can't really all the times 
feel their, their emotions. They talk about them. So I always joke that Librans and air signs in general tend to love therapy because they love to talk about their emotions. But your emotions are not in the mind. They are in the heart chakra. Okay. And if you can't feel your feelings and you can only talk about them and analyze them, then that is the crux of the problem. Because once you get in tune to your emotions, and you may be afraid to, that's another thing I should say for all Venus and Libra, maybe the tendency to be too shallow in terms of emotional emotional shallowness, where you tend to like keep everything light and fluffy and not really delve into the the shadow aspect of yourself and the the times when you're feeling sad, the times when you're feeling heavier emotions. Okay, so speaking of heavier emotions, if your sun is in Scorpio, this is going to soften you in general because, you know, Scorpio can be fierce, it can be intense, ruled by Pluto and Mars, so that's not they're not playing those two planets. You may be very um you love very deeply, but there's still a light touch. There may be more of an artistic influence, although any water sign is going going to naturally be artistic as well. But it just might be more of a social thing where you share it with other people. Because um, Scorpio is pretty private, pretty secretive. And I think this opens you up a little bit, but you may be a little bit shallow in your in your rom- romantic relationships because of this. And not only in that sense, but, y- you know, any time that I see a Scorpio uh, prominent placement, I think of somebody who withholds their emotions so that they can have this illusion of power. So that's something that you're going to still have to guard against because you may naturally go there, go that route. But um, it may make you less jealous. Um, Scorpio tends to be jealous, possessive, but in a very suspicious sort of way. It's because of their fear of abandonment. A lot of Scorpios probably wouldn't admit that. But the sign of Scorpio is associated with death. And death is a form of abandonment if you experience a prominent death in your childhood. So that may really make the, the Scorpio person a lot more afraid of uh, getting close to somebody because they don't want to lose the person after they've opened up their heart to them. And they may fear that the person's also going to use their information against them. So this softens you in that sense. And it, but it can make you more romantic in the sense that you want to be with another person because I see Scorpio as one of those solitary signs. If your son is in Sagittarius, this can make you an idealistic lover where you really share your vision with that person. You may really feel like you have a partner to kind of um, do the kind of things that you want to do in the world, all of the goals that you have. Fire signs tend to be very ambitious, but not just for the sake of making money or to have personal glory, but because they are creative and they want to create whatever it is. So this can lead to an entertaining person, somebody maybe who works in, in uh, perf- as a performer and the the creativity can take over and also the intelligence. And um, so you're going to be even more requiring somebody who shares this value with you. You're not going to do very well with somebody where it's just a, like a, a sexual relationship. You're going to really want that kind of, you know, intellectual rapport and creative um, connection. 
it's going to make the the Sagittarius person more blunt, <laughs> less blunt, less blunt, more diplomatic. Okay, um, they joke and say that Sagittarians are born uh, with a foot in their mouth, and that is certainly true. I I can speak to that. <laughs> um. It was, oh gosh, well, forget it. I'm not going to even go into that because, um, you know, sometimes I say things and it's just like, I'm just being honest and I don't mean to offend anyone, but, you know, I don't even think, you know, sometimes you got to really think before you speak. This can really make you a spend, free spender, okay, because Sagittarius isn't known for budgets and Libra doesn't want a budget either. They're allergic to budgets. They want to have the nice things in life. So a person who is a sun in Sagittarius and a Venus in Libra will probably be very generous with their partner because they love the expansiveness of being able to spend money like water. <laughs> and I think that Librans are good at making money, though. So that can and well, I should say Venus and Libra, and even sometimes um, Sun and Libra too, because they value beauty so much, and they want the finer things in life. And Venus is about money, and they're ruled by it. So there you go. If your Sun is in Virgo, that can make you more romantic. I said in another video when I was talking about Virgo, it's about the Hermit. It's connected to the Hermit card in the major. Arcana of the of the Tarot, um, there's a solitary vibe associated with Virgo, and this makes the Virgo person much more likely to want to connect with somebody romantically, and be in a consistent relationship. Virgo is a mutable sign, so you know a Virgo person can be very flexible. They may even like multiple people, but this makes them more into one person. They may be more free with money if the sun is in Virgo and Venus is in Cancer, for instance, they may be more um, conservative. But in this case, they may be more free with money. They may be more diplomatic and less critical. And this is an important thing because Virgo people tend to dissect their partners and Yet Venus can be how you interact with somebody and this makes the sun in Virgo person much more likely to want to keep the peace and not to say anything offensive and therefore not to criticize. And I think a big one is, again, with the grooming, you know, because Virgo can be very persnickety about hygiene. Now, it's interesting with Virgos, it's all about the germs. <laughs> so they can be OCD in that sense about like, oh, is this hygienic? With Librans, it's just about the appearance of things. And I witnessed a Libran person who was wiping off something and they weren't really even giving a damn about whether or not it was, you know, they were, they were, um, bringing in germs from some other place. They just wanted it to look nice on the surface. Whereas a Virgo person, if they were in the kitchen doing the same work, they would be bringing out the bleach or the, you know, if they like bleach alternative, some tea tree oil or something to kill germs, they're more into that. And uh, so you're getting that combination. So they may be really um, concerned about Appearance and etiquette. Etiquette is a biggie with with Virgos. You know, there's a proper way to do things, you know. And if somebody is uncouth, they're going their skin is going to crawl. But also you may get somebody who is has home training, to use a funny term, and yet and I'm saying like they can they can comport themselves in a respectful way in public, but they still don't send thank you notes when they receive a gift or they don't return phone calls in a timely manner. And this can set off the sun and Virgo person quite a bit because how dare they, you know? 
And uh, so, okay. And if the sun is in Leo, oh my gosh, this person's going to be uber romantic. They're going to be very outgoing. So this is the person you like to, you know, you like to go to parties like all the time. You may like to give parties. You're going to be the life of the party. You're going to just be like the person that gets invited everywhere because you're just so f much fun to be around. Uh, Sun and Leo, all about fun. But then you add that component of Venus in Libra and you get the social propriety, the person who knows exactly what to say, when to say it. The arts are very important to this person. They're very uh, creative. They may be a performer very easily. Um, they're very positive and warm-hearted people. A Libra can be cool because, again, it's an air sign. It may not like to be like, it may not be touchy-feely, to be honest with you. Some, some Libra people are, you know, it's funny. I should have said this at the beginning. It's more romantic than sexual or sensual, okay? So you can have a Libra person who is very beautiful, like a beautiful woman or a man who's very attractive. And they're not all that hot blooded. Check it and see, you know, they're not like that. They're very, um, it's like this facade of somebody, you know, I think for some reason, Rob Lowe popped into my mind, but I know he's a Pisces. Um, and he can't have Venus in, in Libra, but that he might have the moon in Libra though or Libra rising, which would be the appearance. Um, these pretty boys who they look really, they look really attractive, but they may not be that sexy. They may just be more of a heartthrob in the sense of like, almost like this chaste fantasy, okay, that you have for this person. But yeah, you can have, that's like one of those things. Um, in the case of the sun in Leo, though, you're going to have more of the sensuality. Um, the sun in Leo and Venus in Libra can give a, I think in some cases, I'm not going to say all, but there could be the womanizer um, in the sense that the ego of the Leo needs to have that romantic boost from all these different people and needs women to fall in love with him. But I don't know, because I know Leo is very loyal, but then I think of Mick Jagger and, and that gets blown to smithereens. So um, I'm going to have to see what his Venus is in. As I recall, it's in like cancer or something. And he does tend to, to get with women who are either water signs or earth signs, even though he is a fire sign. So that could be what's going on. But it could be in certain cases this man who's like a, a womanizer, but he may be very suave. What do they say? Suavecito? Is that the, is that what that means? I don't know. But just somebody who's, who's very charming, but maybe going from flower to flower, a bee that goes from flower to flower for more honey. Um, but I think a, a person with the sun in Leo is capable of commitment for sure, being a fixed sign. So I want to put that out there. Um, overspending. <laughs> that could be a big one because of the, the reasons. Leo likes to live like a king or a queen. And then you add the, the Libra influence. Also vanity, shallowness. Um, the person who wants the best of the best and wants to be around the beautiful people, the, the celebrity the, the person who's into celebrities wants to be around the, the, the movers and shakers. And yet it's all because it massages their ego or they just like the beautiful life. They don't necessarily have much depth to them. And so that's something to think about. But they're going to be very charming and they're going to be very warm hearted. Okay. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I, for some reason, I, I had a feeling when I, when, you know, before I did this, that I was going to take a long time with this sign because I've gone over way much longer than I usually do for each of these signs, but I've had a lot of fun doing these and I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you check below this um, video for 
uh, if you'd like a private reading, because I do, I'm providing like direct links to some of my readings. But uh, you take care of yourselves. Bye.